I thought I'd start with um, a little bit of a review from the Phi perspective of what our mission and objectives are, um, uh, which is basically a, a clean slate uh, specification uh, for a physical layer. We wanted to offer alternatives to what was currently available in standards, things that would uh, specifically address the uh, mobile community and the mobile applications. So, of course, we were interested in um, reducing power. We were interested in uh, low pin count. SSCs are very, very small, very compact. Um, there's probably up to five radios in SSCs, and we wanted to make sure that um, we, when we devised the high-speed I.O. interconnect, that it didn't interfere with those radios. In addition to that, um, we wanted to optimize it for chip-to-chip. -chip. Many of the standards for communications that are out there uh, consider cables and uh, or very long transits of electrical interconnects. And really, for a phone, that's not necessarily uh, needed. Um, oh, another, uh, a couple of other things um, associated with just the uh, how they would be used. Uh, for instance, we wanted to be compatible with a, a standard CMOS process. We didn't want to develop something that required some exotic substrate. And also, um, with an eye towards manufacturing, we wanted to uh, build an interface um, that had determinacy for test. Uh, a lot of the existing standards um, are very challenging to test for compatibility because they don't aren't able to do um, um, determinacy. Uh, let me see, did I miss anything? Oh, okay, so for low power, that means not only um, reducing the power of the physical interface itself, but also um, allowing for fast state transitions to and from low power states to enable, um, which is every bit as important to managing power as the native power of the interface itself. Um, any questions, or should I just charge on and let's... Go ahead and take questions at the end. Okay. Uh, and the other, uh, probably most important goal we had was to have a modular physical layer. layer. The idea here being that um, uh, developing new different phis for every chip that comes along can be one of the most time-consuming and effort resource-consuming things you do when you build an SSC. So if we have a modular interface that can be reused over and over and over again, the idea is you, you develop it once and then you can reuse it in almost every place. You can see based on uh, this diagram over to the left, which you may have seen earlier today, I don't know if it's, uh, well, it's on the website anyway. Um, there are a number of interfaces, uh, whether it be display or camera, mass storage, uh, in a modem, um, all facility, all use uh, the, the physical layer interfaces defined by our group. Um, let's see, anything else I want to say? Well, there's a lot of active contributors. You can see the list here. Um, uh, obviously, uh, people who are you know very deeply involved in the development of the hardware that facilitate phones are uh, participating. Also, I I was really I want to tell how hard this group works. <laughs> uh, we actually meet two hours uh, a day for, per meeting: Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, the ESG also meets for two hours on Thursday. So there's a pretty huge commitment by the people that are contributing to this group. And I think it's reflected in the, the, uh, the stability and the uh, quality of the spec that we have. Yeah, okay, in terms of uh, getting to the core of what we're doing here, the updates. For DeFi, uh, the version 1.0 was approved on, uh, in September. Um, this has been superseded by a 1.1 which uh, we added in order to extend the operation beyond one, or make it easier to operate beyond one gigabit per second, up to 1.5. This was based on a desire expressed by the contributors to, um, to keep, to reuse the interface for some of the higher, um, some of the higher resolution requirements that were, looked like they were emerging at the time. Whether that be a retina display, or whether that be a, a high resolution camera, 
Um, some of the some of the features of this are um, it's extremely simple uh, source synchronous um, high speed low power and high speed and low power modes and can handle very robust interconnects. Frequently, things like cameras and displays um, are not. Uh, directly attached to uh, the same board as the SOC, so therefore it takes some doing to get a, a route to them. So we want to be able to provide a robust interconnects. For uh, the other physical layer that we're working on, and um, the work on this one is probably still ongoing, um, as opposed to the D5, which we're almost to the point where I think everything that we'd like to define in D5 has been defined. M5 sort of takes off from where D5 left off to move forward. Um, we have uh, the version 1 is currently approved. Uh, that goes up to 1.45 gigabits per second. The 2.0 is coming very soon. Uh, I think you should see that uh, adopted by the end of June. Extends the operation to 2.9 gigabits per second. In addition to that, each of the, um, each of the versions you'll see uh, increment the or, or correspond to an increment in the speed for the high-speed gears. Um, next year, um, well, what we're trying to do here, I think, is uh, has been called. Uh, we try to do a gear a year, <laughs> which means we try and increment the speed or turn that specification about once a year. Uh, we're on track right now to get the version 3.0, which gets, extends the operation up to 5.8 gigabits per second, about the same time next year, and then the year after that, um, extending the operation up to 11.6 gigabits per second. Um, there are challenges associated with this uh, that we've tried to address uh, meticulously in the 2.0 spec to try and ensure that we have a scalable solution that will easily increment through these um, high speeds. Uh, it gets a little tougher each speed you go. Um, now these uh, are envisioned to take into consideration the next generation of, of high speed interconnects, the requirements of, of cell modems, of memory, direct attached memory, um, next generation cameras and displays. Um, also, we have a joint standard development. Um, uh, two of them right now. One is with uh, JEDEC UFS, which is uh, currently at version 1.1, and then also with the USB SSIC interface, which is currently at version 1. The features of M5, uh, in addition to opening up the avenues for higher speed, are a custom clock. Uh, the link itself can become self-consistent. Um, a very aggressive power management, and also it's optical or repeater ready. So as the topology, as the speed grows and the topology challenges become higher, uh, we've already built in the capability to support a repeater. So if you want to go further distance and you don't mind the extra power it costs to do that, we can do it. Um, and. Finally, uh, again, here's some more of a graphical representation of the roadmap for, for the Phi group going forward. Uh, M5, you can see, it's done now. Version 2 should be done very soon. Uh, version 3 adds the final uh, PWM gear as well as the high speed gear 3. And then um, in 2014, we should have support for high speed gear 4. Uh, Early adopters, DigiRef has been um, involved with M5 from the very beginning. Um, and this is not to mean by any means that um, at version 2, DigiRef stops. Look, they're continuing forward. But what this means is that um, at, they have currently identified a use for faster than high speed gear 2. Um, but as you can see, many other, uh, like CSI 3, um, start. Uh, uh, High-speed gear 2 is a place where all of a sudden it becomes very interesting to people like cameras. And so they'll start from there and take off. We have other uh, participants such as UFS, which is currently specified for gear 1 and soon to be specified for gear 2, as well as LLI and SSIC, which started with version 1 and pr probably don't see any upward limit um, in terms of the bandwidth that they might require. And that about wraps it up. I don't know if I spoke too. Oh, I spoke a little slow. Um, 
<laughs> Are there any questions? We still have time for questions. Mm-hmm. Just speak up. Oh, yes. Uh, when do you think M5 will replace D5? Well, I think that they'll work uh, side by side for a, a, a while. There's always picking the transition point. Uh, may have more to do with uh, technology and implementation than, than actually a hard and fixed time. I can see certainly um, the, the need for a... Uh, wouldn't it be nice to have a display interface that could support bi-directional traffic for, um, for you know, gestures and, and touch screen as well, for data coming back from the screen as well as data going forward? Wouldn't it be nice to have that on a consolidated link? That would be a place where you'd see M5 transition to displays. Uh, for cameras, you know, you never know. Um, uh, last year at this time, 3D was all they were talking about, and stereo cameras. And is that actually going to be a feature coming forward? I don't know, but certainly the CSI group, the camera group, um, were, were enough interested in it to start developing M5. So anytime you see uh, an increment or a step function in terms of the amount of bandwidth necessary to accomplish the task, you'll see D5 be replaced with M5. Good question. A anything else? Yes? What does custom clock mean? Custom clock? Oh, um, well, so what you can do with M5, uh, in, in D5, you send the clock from the, the source to the destination. With M5, you can have a variety of different choices for how you get the clock for the specific units. You can have either a different clock, uh, an individual clock source at, at either end of the link. You can take um, one clock and um, use it as a common reference, such as DigiRef does, to both source and destination. Or um, you actually uh, can send the clock through the signal itself. Uh, it's 8-bit, 10-bit encoded, and you can extract the clock from the data itself, the transmitted data. So a variety, whatever, you're, whatever makes sense in the platform you want to implement it in, M5 supports it.